Hey everyone, Hammer Dan here with Hammer Performance. So, today we're going to show you how to reassemble a 2004 and later Buell, or I'm sorry, a Sportster rubber mount case. Um, basically all the same from, from 04 to current as far as the rubber mounts go and whatnot. So, first thing we want to do here uh, is take the cases apart. We showed you how to do that in our last video, uh, separating the cases and whatnot. When you do that and you separate the cases, we're going to need to replace some bearings here. Of course, our, our, our motor sprocket shaft bearing on the left-hand side here, uh, we want to replace that. We also want to replace our fifth gear transmission bearing in the case half here as well. Um, and so we've already tapped this bearing out. It's a, it's a slip fit, so it taps out pretty easily. Um, we'll want to do that and then go ahead and pull your fifth gear sprocket off of the bearing race there so it's prepped ready to go at this point here. And we'll talk about that a little bit here later. Um, clean the cases really, really well. That's very important um, um, to get it to this point. Um, also, you're going to want to take your uh, oil filter uh, housing and check ball and spring out of there when you clean. That way you can flush out there as well. You don't want to leave that in there. That's very important. If you leave that all assembled, you may end up um, catching any kind of material, metal, that type deal behind that check ball and don't get it out of there. When you put it all back together and start the motor, it's going to open that check ball and send that all right back through the motor. So very good idea to take that apart when you're cleaning the two case halves. Um, at this point, you got it separated. Everything's cleaned up really, really well. The first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and press this big uh, bearing out of here, the motor sprocket shaft bearing that houses the left case half side. There's some specialty tools to kind of do that. Um, we use, to press the new bearing in, we use a twin cam tool from Screaming Eagle because um, the bearing is the same. This fifth, this, this uh, motor sprocket shaft bearing is the same as the twin cam bearings on either side of the twin cam in a, in a set of twin cam cases. So they consolidated bearings with the twin cams and the later model rubber mount sportsters on that drive bearing on the left hand side there. So we use a twin cam tool, a uh, bearing tool to press this bearing in. But you cannot use this tool to press that bearing out. If we flip the case over and we take a look here, we have, once you press the seal out, take the snap ring out and press the seal out, we have a lip down here, okay? That lip, if you put this tool in here to press the bearing out, it'll hit that lip and you'll break the cases. So what we've done is we've gone to Harbor Freight and bought a um, bearing press kit. It has all different kinds of uh, aluminum, you know, bearing removal pieces in it. And what we've had to do is turn down the outside diameter on this one so that it fits in here within that lip that's in there to go ahead and press the bearing out. So we're going to go ahead and use this tool to press the bearing out with the bottom of this tool. So a lot of guys that are doing it at home, you can kind of, you either take it to a shop and have a shop press the bearing out for you. A lot of guys will do that. That's the easy solution. Otherwise, if you have a press in your garage, you can go ahead and, um, you know, improvise on finding a tool to go ahead and press that bearing out. So the first thing you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to go ahead and remove this snap ring with the, with the screwdriver here. Just get it started and it'll pop right out of there. So we pull that snap ring out of there. And we'll set that aside. Um, so then at this point in time, we're going to want to go ahead and press that bearing out. Now, we're going to press in a Screaming Eagle lefty bearing. And they make that bearing for the twin cams because the bearing's the same as I said earlier. This is the part number and this is all the stuff that you get with that lefty bearing. Okay, it's a much, much stronger bearing than the stock bearing that's in there. So we highly recommend you upgrade this bearing to the Screaming Eagle lefty bearing. So when you buy this kit, it's gonna come with all kinds of other uh, spacers and, and races and snap ring and everything else. Um, and then the bearing itself. Well, in the Sportsters, we don't use any of this. We won't use the spacers. We won't use this spacer and, and those shims there or spacers there, but we will use the snap ring and the bearing, okay? 
So just keep that in mind when you buy the bearing. Don't worry about the other parts that are in there. You won't use them. Just the bearing and the snap ring. Okay. So at this point in time, we're going to go ahead and press this bearing out of this case half. So we'll show you how we do that. Follow me over here. So set that big one down. Nope, leave that there, Ross. Yep, and then set that inner. Yep, that. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to flip it over. The transmission's held in, pressed in there. We're going to set this down on this tool so that we're right. Nope. No. So that we're right in the middle. And then we're going to put our special tool in there so we don't catch that lip. Okay. So we'll get that in there. Make sure you're not on that lip. We got our special little tool in there. We're going to go ahead and start popping this bearing out of there. It'll fall down into the cup that we have down below. Bam. Okay. So at this point, we're going to go ahead, pull our tool out of there set that down so voila we've pressed that bearing out there we have her there now when we go to press the new bearing in this tool which for the twin cam will slide right over that so that centers it perfectly there for us we'll throw that away Ross if you want to go grab the other bearing and we'll go ahead and press in the other bearing. So we'll slide our tool over that. We'll wait for the bearing here. Okay, and we got a little bit of lubrication on the bearing, especially on the outside. So we're going to go ahead and set that bearing in. Then we're going to use the tool. And that aligns that bearing with the hole in the bottom of the tool. Let's do this, Ross. Let's go ahead and use this. So spin that up. We're going to, yep, go ahead and take that all the way up. And we're going to make shift here. Okay. Just like that. We'll center it. Okay. Now, when you press this bearing in, it goes in pretty smooth, but you want to be really careful on the press and wait to feel it bottom out in the bottom as we get in there. You're going to see the snap ring and go past the snap ring, but as we get down, we're going to go easy. You don't want to blow the bottom out of the case. Right there. I just felt it tighten up. So we're going to call that good. Loosen it. Take off our tool. We're going to double check, make sure our snap ring is exposed, which it is. I can see it there, our snap ring groove. All right, back over to the table. Okay, so we got our new bearing pressed in. We're going to take our new snap ring. We're going to go ahead and just guide that in by hand all the way around and it pops right in. Make sure you hear it click in there. Okay. So there we have it. We got our new bearing in. The Harley Davidson Screaming Eagle Lefty bearing. That's very important. That's definitely an upgrade from the stock bearing that's in there. Okay. This case half for now. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put our shifter forks in and our shafts. We went and cleaned our shafts and shifter forks. You, it's a good idea. You don't necessarily, if, if the transmission's good, you don't have to take it out. All that stuff is good. But it's a good idea to pull your shifter forks out and take a look at your shifter forks to see if you have any wear. And you're looking for wear patterns around here really bad. 
okay, on there and the pad here and the pad on the inside. Okay, this looks pretty good. This one here looks like there's hardly any wear on it whatsoever. On this side, just a tad bit of wear right there. You can see just a little. Nothing to be concerned about. This one looks good on this side. Very, very minor wear. I've seen some where there's a big ridge or groove actually in the shifter, uh, shifter fork itself. If that's the case, you consider changing the shifter forks because if you don't, you take a chance of a lot of times if your if your um, shifter mechanism is not working properly and you're you're not able to put it in in a gear um, and it pops out of gear that type deal probably caused from a, either a bent shift fork or one that's uh, wore really really well. So keep that in mind. That's something to check while you're at this point as well, putting it back together or prepping the cases to put them back together. So I think we're good to go here. We're gonna go ahead and just put some red line assembly lube on our shafts. Like that. Just to give it a little bit of lubrication here as we put it back together. Shift drum. Doesn't have to be crazy here. It's going to get some transmission fluid in it and whatnot. We can put it on the on the alignment dowel here as well. You don't have to get too crazy with it here as we put this together. So at this point, you're you have two shift forks that are the same where the alignment dowel is right in the middle of the shifter fork. And then you have one where it's offset. The offset one goes on the top and your two centers go on the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and slide our shift drum in there. Okay, pretty easy. Just slides right in there like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our shifter forks in there or try to anyways. Um, we may, I think, want to put the shifter fork in, and it goes in a groove in the transmission down there. I have to kind of look to see, oh, but there's a groove in the transmission. Oh, I'm sorry, right here. So that one goes right there in that groove. This one goes all the way in to that groove kind of work its way in there like that. Make sure that on the bottom, your alignment dowels are sitting up. So at this point, I think, and you'll kind of get the process as we do this. We're able to slide that in. That should sit in a groove down there. This should sit in a groove like that. And then we'll put our last fork in which if you look down here, you'll see the groove. You can see that groove where it goes there with the alignment pin facing up. I'm gonna work that in like that, and that should fit in that groove. Whoops. Okay, so now you're kind of rotating things to make sure that we're falling in as we turn like that like that one goes in then we slide our shaft in it doesn't matter which way our shafts go I'm gonna slide them through like that and slide this one through by itself all the way and you'll see the holes in the cases in there that the shafts line up with i need a small rubber mallet So these shafts are really, thank you. These shafts are a um, really mild press fit. Um, so you just want to kind of tap in. You can hear it, hear it when it kind of bottoms out. Okay. So there we have it. We make sure we're in our grooves. Our shafts are in, and we're golden. So this case half is prepped and ready to go. We'll set this aside and we'll work on our other case half. On this case half, we have a couple different things to prep. 
I highly recommend as you're rebuilding the cases to put them back together that you take your oil squirters off, peel the gasket off the back of the oil squirter. Here's your oil squirters, peel the gasket off the back because we'll want to replace the gasket and it's a good I idea to take some air if you have an air hose or whatnot um, and blow just a little bit of air through to make sure that you're blowing out all excess of oil and that you've got a clean passage through there. Just be careful, don't have to blow a ton of air through there, but it's a good idea to just kind of blow those out and make sure that you're blowing out oil that comes out of there because there's oil stuck behind the check ball that's in there. You just want to make sure you don't have nothing stuck in there and there's no air. If there's no air blowing out, you'll want to replace it because there's probably something stuck behind the check ball causing it not to, to squirt oil. So. At this point, we're going to take our two new seals and put our two new seals in. Like that. And like that. The oil squirters are the same. They're not one directional. So we'll go ahead and set those in there like that. And then we have our four little bolts. And if Ross, you could grab me some red Loctite. I'm going to red Loctite these in at least blue. I suggest just a dab of red. You don't want these screws coming out of there. They will blow up your motor. So we'll go ahead and just give it a little dab on each one. And we're going to get them started here. that like that Get them all snug. Now keep in mind you're threading into aluminum, so don't get crazy on tightening these things down. I just give them a nice, nice final snug there. Just like that. Okay, we got that done. Um, next step, we're going to want to go ahead and put our check ball in. Clean your check ball. Make sure you don't have any goop or anything on that. Slide your check ball and spring in there. And then take your oil filter mount. Screw that in there. Actually, I think we want to put a little bit of... I'm going to go a little bit of red Loctite on this. Otherwise, if you don't, a lot of times you take your oil filter off and it pulls this out of there as well. Kind of a pain in the butt. So you can hit it with a little bit of red Loctite. Screw that down. Is that the one? Do we have that one? Okay. And we're going to go ahead and snug this down. Like that. All right, so we got that in. We got our squirters in. Lastly, we need to put our fifth gear transmission bearing in there. On the fuel injected bikes, it takes a double road bearing. Just like this one here, it's a double row. So this is a slip fit. I'm going to put just a little bit of oil on here. This is some assembly lube. So we're going to go ahead and just coat the outside of the bearing here just a little. With any excess, we're going to coat inside so we, so we don't squeegee any aluminum or smear aluminum when we tap this in. Like that. I'm going to set our bearing in there. Now, I've used an old bearing race from one of these that I've kept, which fits over there perfectly and high enough. 
so that we can go ahead and tap around. You never want to bang on the inside race, it'll damage those bearings. We want to bang on the outside to get this going. You'll be able to tap it right around, it'll go right down in there. And you'll hear the tune change as you're tapping, just like that, where we bottomed out. Okay. So we've tapped on the outside to not hurt that bearing. And we can see we've tapped it down far enough to where our snap ring groove is exposed. Grab me the big pliers. So we're gonna go ahead, we've cleaned our big snap ring. We're gonna go ahead and install it. Now on the snap ring, there's kind of a rolled side. You can kind of feel a smoother side and a flat, slot, a flat side, okay, on that snap ring. I put the flat side down against the bearing. We got a locking snap ring players that works really well. We'll get it all the way down in that groove and then open it up and then I just push around. You heard that snap there. Make sure we're all the way in, all the way around, okay? So we're good there. We got our bearing in. You got to pull your fifth gear through at this point. Um, because we're putting case halves together and the transmissions incorporated into the case halves. So you have to pull your fifth gear through at this time. You can't do it later on like we did with the um, earlier model cases where the transmission's exposed externally into the primary where you can access it. Um, this is all enclosed into one with the rubber mounts and so we have to pull it through and prep it all to get it ready when we put it together. So on your fifth gear, there's a groove. Make sure you change the O-ring that's on there. But the O-ring goes down into that groove. Just like that. Okay. We're going to go ahead and take a little bit of oil. You can use motor oil, assembly lube, whatever you think there. And we're gonna put it around that rubber O-ring as well as our race there, just like that. To make it easier, we're gonna rub a little bit of assembly lube here on our two bearings. Now this double wall, double road bearing already has the spacer built into it. So you don't have a spacer there. The spacer is part of the whole bearing assembly on the later model cases. I think 07 and later is when they went to the double row. 06s and earlier still had the single row with a spacer. So we have a specialty tool. Again, I've used this tool for many years from my racing days. And that to pull this fifth gear through, you can make one. Basically a long bolt, big washer with a small washer and uh, going to stick it through like this so that it fits, sits right there on the end. We're going to go ahead. We're going to pull it through here like this. Set that down. I use a big socket that fits over right to that race there into the spacer. Okay, you want this, you want to pull through and only pull through on the inside race. You never want to pull through on the outside, you'll hurt the bearings. So we'll go ahead and put that over. So we'll go ahead and move this up, get this right, just like this. Put our washer on there and our nut. As we get it to this point, we want to kind of center it on that spacer, like that. I 
three quarter, use a punch through the hole to kind of hold it. And then we're gonna go ahead and just tighten it. We'll start to pull that through. Again, we're pulling on the inner race to pull that fifth gear all the way through like that. All right, it's tightened up right there. Of there slide that out take a look spins good over here spins good we got it pulled all the way through okay so we're good there at this point the next thing before we put our our race on there or our uh, gasket on there we're going to go ahead and lubricate this a little bit you can use motor oil you can use transmission fluid, but we're going to roll it up. We're going to lubricate the bearings just to give it something for startup. And that'll work its way down. Okay. Next, we're going to go ahead and put our seal on. Just work that seal around like that so it goes over. We're going to take our rubber mallet. Tap our seal all the way around. It snugs it up pretty good. That seal's nice and tight on there. It'll work its way in though once it gets going. Okay, we got it lubricated. We got the new seal on. So now we've taken care of our fifth gear transmission bearing and whatnot. We're good here. So, we are almost ready to go ahead and put the cases together. Um, one of the most critical tools that you're going to need when assembling a rubber mount case half is this little guy right here. It's probably one of the most important tools. And what this does is you screw it into your neutral switch indicator hole right here actually so let me see over here So we're going to go ahead and start to screw this in. Now what this does, it holds back your neutral indicator arm that rides on the shifter drum. On the outer part of the shifter drum here, it rides through the gears and that this wheel rides on the notches and when it gets to neutral it trips the neutral indicator switch okay but we have to po move this back out of the way so that when we put the case halves together when we release it it falls down otherwise if this is not moved back out of the way you're going to crimp your two case halves together and it's going to bend this arm 
guaranteed every single time. So we're going to want to go ahead and hold, hold this out of the way while we tighten this in. Make sure you're all the way up. Just like that. Got to hold that up out of the way. That's probably the biggest specialty tool out of putting the case halves together besides, of course, um, pressing bearings in and out and, and that type deal. So very, very important we put that tool in there to hold that out of the way. So from this point, we're ready. We got our big roller bearing lubed ready to go. We're going to lube our pinion race here. And now we're going to go ahead and prep our crank. So we are putting in, because our crank from testing and having probably, I don't know how many thousands of dyno pulls on our shop mule, um, we're replacing the crank. When we pulled it out, it was actually 13 thousandths of an inch out. Flywheel was separated, and you can see the rub where we've actually rubbed the flywheel on the inner part of the case half. Um, particularly down here, you can see. So we, we had separation big time from revving it to 8,000 RPMs. I don't know how many times, tuned in numerous different packages and whatnot. So from a cost effective standpoint, we suggest going to the Buell, the 08 and later Buell XB slash XR crank. Um, it's a far superior crank than the stock one. As you can see, we have a bigger shaft here, okay, um, which means that we have to go with a Buell motor sprocket um, rotor assembly on this side to fit, okay. The flywheel assembly is lighter than the factory flywheel assembly for a sportster, so we get the, the lighter weight, and I want to say it's about three pounds lighter than a stock flywheel. It has a one and a half inch crank pin instead of a one and a quarter inch crank pin, pressed together crank pin. So this is going to help our flywheel separation at higher RPMs. That's why Buell developed this in the later model XBs and the XRs. It's got stronger connecting rods than factory, much, much stronger connecting rods than factory. And the nice part about this whole deal, if you went and bought a stock flywheel assembly to replace in your rubber mount Sportster, that flywheel assembly goes for $1,100 bucks from Harley retail. This crank from Harley, and Harley knows about it, they haven't done anything yet, but they are putting a limited production run in now since the bikes are getting older and they're eventually going to phase this out. But this, uh, this crank from the factory retail is like $695. you got to have the motor sprocket assembly, the washer, and the bolt. I think the total package retail puts us right up about $895. Bucks. So that's much, much cheaper than a stock replacement crank. You get a far superior crank lighter stronger rods one and a half inch crank pin instead of a one and a quarter so it's a much much better assembly than the stock replacement so we highly recommend if you can do this and you have a bad crank and you're doing this that you do upgrade to this better crank that's what we've done um, just because of cost and uh, a better far far superior flywheel assembly as we put it back together and continue to tune packages and whatnot so um, we're going to go ahead and use some assembly lube to lube up our race, our big roller bearing race here. And then next is going to be our pinion race. Now, you need to figure out what pinion bearing that you are putting on this crank. So what you have to do is take a couple measurements. You need to measure the outside diameter of your pinion shaft race right here and take and write that measurement down. And it needs to be measured all the way down to tenths of thousandths of an inch. And then you need to measure the inside diameter with a bore gauge of your pinion race. 
the inside diameter of the pinion race. Again, that needs to be measured to a tenth of a thou. Okay, very critical. So then you take those two measurements when you have those two measurements. And again, you can take it to a machine shop if you don't have the tools and you need that done to figure out which bearing best is to take it to a machine shop that has them. Um, they can take those measurements for you. When you have those measurements, then you can look in the manual. And the Harley manual is going to have a pinion shaft bearing selection. Okay, you're going to have the inside diameter of your outer race in the case half here. And you're going to have the outside diameter of your pinion shaft race down here. You're going to go ahead and cross those two numbers, and that'll give you a color-coded bearing of what you need to run in there. That's the, the slop or the play in there that they have. Um, so for ours, we are actually running a green in ours from the measurements that we took. Okay, so we're going to go back over here. Do we have the snap ring for this? So we're going to put our green bearing on after we lubricate. Okay, then we're going to slide our bearing on there. And then we need the specialty tool. Hold up. So we got our tool. And uh, over here, grab that tool, pull that off. Grab our old snap ring off of here. Like that. Stupid cords. One day we'll upgrade to a far better setup. <laughs> okay, and we're going to use our specialty tool here to put this snap ring on. Make sure you hear it snap all the way down into the groove. Double, triple check this all the way around. All right, we're on there. Just like that. Okay, crank is ready to go in. Case halves are prepped. Everything is assembled. We got our fifth gear bearing in. We've moved our um, neutral switch out of the way. We've measured our bearings. We've got our pinion bearing on. We've got our um, Screaming Eagle lefty bearing in. We've got new seals on our squirters. I think we're ready to go. Next thing we need to do is take some brake clean and Use a clean rag or a clean section of a rag. This is very, very important. Some brake clean. And we're going to wipe off our sealing location very thoroughly here. I suggest maybe doing it a couple times. We want to make sure we have no oil or grease or anything on here. This is very, very important. If you have stuff on here, it could cause a potential leak. So you want to make sure at, when you're at final that you're clean. The brake clean will evaporate off, but it will remove any oil, grease, dirt from the case half. Okay, we got that case half done. Let's set that over there. As 
super important that you get this right. You just, man, this is the last step and you don't want to have a leak. Okay, so we got those. Whatever you do, don't touch them. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and lubricate a few things here. I'm gonna lubricate our shaft, just some assembly lube. And again, it's just for pre-startup because eventually, once it gets going, you'll have oil in there. You can dab some of the gears. Don't have to get too, too crazy. Okay, so I got a little bit of an area that I touched with the assembly lube, so just make sure okay so at this point we're ready to go ahead and put our crank in the big bearing side be very careful putting this in slide right between your rods Just like that, slid right in. Okay, now again, being anal, working that in, I'm gonna just go around the crank area one more time, just to make sure. Okay, man, at this point, we got both our case halves cleaned. Clean my fingers. And we are ready to put the case halves together. We use a uh, three bond liquid gasket, 1184 gray. Um, that's what we use for case sealant. I know Harley sells their own gray seal, so you can get it from Harley as well. They do carry it. I've seen it. Um, we just use 1184 because it's easy accessible for us. So we're going to go ahead. And now when you put the gray seal on the cases, you want to coat each case half side. You don't want to gob it on. You don't want it to squeeze. You're going to have enough, you know, light coat. Coat the whole aluminum, but don't overdo it to where it's goozing over the sides and whatnot, because when you put the two case halves together, they're going to squeeze together as it is. But you want to make sure you have enough, especially on both sides, but not too much. So it's a fine line here. Um, but you don't want it to ooze over because then all of a sudden you get, you get it everywhere else. So we're going to go ahead and start spreading. You're basically coating. Go around this alignment dowel here. I'll put it on my finger and just kind of spread it out and then go back and make sure it's a nice even coat on everything. You want to be somewhat quick. It does start to get tacky pretty quick and you still got the other case have to do. So you try to move at somewhat of a reasonable pace, but it does take a little while to dry.
Make sure you get reasonable amount around the alignment dowel. And just be careful here on your oil passage area that you don't get too much to where it overflows into that passage area there. Don't forget your centerpiece. Just kind of putting it on there and then pulling it down to where I need to be. This is probably this is the toughest case I have because you got the tranny in the way got the crank in the way Okay, that half is done. Pull this one over. I get too much on I'll go ahead and just kind of work it through however far I go go back and kind of spread it out Again, be careful of these oil passages here so you don't get too much in there. You don't want it to clog up anything. Don't forget your middle piece here. If you wanted to get all up there, you surely could. It's nothing that traps fluid or anything. I usually stop about right there.
double check, just make sure we're good all the way around. I think it looks pretty good. Clear my finger. Okay, grab our cap. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and put the case halves together. Try not to touch anything. Be careful sliding this over. You got three different areas. You got the two shafts on the transmission and your pinion shaft. Kind of start lining it up. This. Sometimes you need to spin. All right, we're all the way on. Sometimes you need to spin your shaft to get the gears to mesh. Okay, I think we're good at that. We're gonna go ahead and flip it like this. Go ahead. And okay, so our case halves are together. You can always spin. Make sure we're good. At this point, you're going to have, what, 17, I think? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 case have bolts. You're going to have 12 or 13 long, 4 short. Of course, your 4 short go down here. Now, the manual on the rubber mounts calls for some Loctite. You know, we lubricate with the 1184 pretty good, and that gets down into the bolt holes. And I don't like the fact of Loctiting because when you do that, I've found when I've disassembled a case after I've Loctited it, immediately after I've Loctited it, that as you screw the bolt into the hole, you know, it squeegees the Loctite off, right? It, Loctite doesn't get all the way down in there unless you're putting Loctite actually in each bolt, it'd be each bolt hole. So as you're turning, you're squeegeeing that Loctite off of there. And that squeegee, as you got your two case halves together, that squeegee sends that Loctite down to where your gray seal is. And I've pulled the case halves apart to where I've seen the Loctite go down and squeegee between the two gray seal halves. Um, to me, man, that's a big, a big chance that you take for um, causing a leak, putting these together. So your call on whether or not you want to use Loctite on the case halves, putting them together. I just, uh, I'm, little, I'm really weary of that in having a potential leak on squeezing the two case halves together. So we're just going to snug those four down there and then start putting our bolts in. We have one, two, three, four, five, around the transmission, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So that's 11 plus the four. You have two extras, they go on the other side, but we're gonna work on just getting these in there and snug for now. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead, when I get them to this point, I'm going to just snug them all by hand just to squeeze the case halves together right away. That one, that one. 
All right. So we got them all snug on this side. I'm going to go ahead and rotate the case around. Flip it over. Put these other two in right here. Snugging those down. Okay, just check. So we're spinning good. Feels like horsepower. Okay. We got them all in, just snug down, so at least we're squeezing it together. So if we look in the manual, the manual is going to give us our torque sequence here. Okay, you can see that torque sequence there. And it says, you know, it says to apply a few drops of red Loctite to the bolts and then it says fasten to 15 to 19 foot pounds. Okay, again, um, I like to go middle to upper of that scale. So I, I would say we're going to look at doing about 18. 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, we have our manual. Again, if you don't have the manual, you just saw the picture. And we're going to go ahead and start torquing the bolts. So one, two, three, four across the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine up this side. Six, seven, eight, nine, and then ten here. And then eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen around the top. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and then we're going to go ahead and rotate it to do these two. It says sixteen on top. 17 on the bottom. All right, so there we have it. Got them all torqued. Flip it back around here. We're going to check our crank. Make sure we spin good. Man, that feels like about 130 right there. <laughs> okay, so we're good. At this point, we're going to spin it back around. Don't forget, we're going to want to take off our specialty tool that's going to drop that neutral switch arm down oh hey gravity damn gravity okay Got our specialty tool out. We'll set that aside. We've got our torque specs done. We can set that aside. We've got our cap here that we'll want to go ahead and put on. New cap. And you can put this on before 
hand if you wanted to as well. Just tap that in. We're spinning. Okay, so the next thing we can do, screw in our neutral switch. Get that started in there. Grab the specialty tool over here. Snug that down. Okay, now you can put on your bronze oil pump gear, your pinion gear, and your nut. Check out our video on our YouTube channel to go ahead and do that. Um, lastly, we have our seal. Um, this is probably another difficult task is putting in this seal. You have your spacer here. Okay, it's kind of a rounded and a flat. You want the flat to go against the bearing. See that there? That pushes right down against the bearing. Okay, um, your seal. You're gonna put the seal on with the open lip or the open face facing out so it'll go like that this is a pretty tight fit so we're just going to put a little bit of assembly lube on the outside of this there's a snap ring that holds this seal in Now, when you press this seal in, like I say, we have, Harley has a tool, but it's kind of hard to get. So you kind of develop your own. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put the seal on like this. And then let me grab the specialty tools here. These two. We've taken a bearing race. I've ground it down so it fits, just fits inside there. Okay, just on the, just on the outer portion. Okay, because we want to press that seal down. Then, again, we use our tool here for a, actually wrong tool. Grab the other box. The XB cranks aren't like the regular stock ones that have a shaft that sticks out like that with threads on it. This is a reverse, so what holds this in is going to be a washer that goes on there and a bolt, and that goes on after you put your motor sprocket assembly on. So it's a little bit different where on the other cranks there's a big nut um, that holds the motor sprocket assembly on there. So to press bearings on, we use a twin cam tool, which has the screw in that screws into the motor sprocket shaft like this and then we're able to screw on our other shaft for our tool now this is a tool that presses twin cam races in again it's a Jim's tool that slides over this and we're going to use that to press our race flush anyways with
We're going to press ours flush. So, Ross, do you want to hold this crank for me, please? Let me get it all the way up. If you can hold that crank so it don't spin. And then we're going to go ahead and press this race. Flush, and it'll tighten up right there. Okay, we can stand up like that if you want to hold it and just hold the rods there. Okay, so now we've got it pressed flush, but we need to get it pressed down in there so we can get our snap ring in there. This is where it gets a little bit difficult. This is the how we've set it up. So that we want to set up so that it's perfect with that race there. Then we're going to go ahead and start to tighten it to press that seal down in there. Get it going like that. I'm going to back it off and take it out. I'm going to do this a little at a time so I can see where our snap ring is. We can't see our snap ring yet. So I'm going to put that back in, but we're getting close. I'm going to tighten it some more. Loosen it, take it off again, check. Uh, we are really close, if you can see there. We're really close. I'm just going to go just a, just a tick more. Again, to get this seal in, you may have to come up with a... system for you to work. Okay. Thanks, Ross. So now we'll set that back. And screw our tools. Grab our snap ring here, clean it up. Okay, and then we're just gonna put this in by hand, fit it down in the groove, walk it right around, bam, snaps right in there. Make sure she's down in there. Your spacer. Spacer that goes in there. That just pops right down in there like that. Just like that. Okay. Check everything again. Spins nice and easy. We got our spacer behind it. We got our spacer against the bearing in there. That's very important. Make sure you put that spacer in there. Um, and then, because this long wide spacer presses up against that spacer when you go ahead and, and uh, um, torque down your bolt for the motor sprocket assembly. Um, so the flat spacer up against the bearing, and then we're gonna press our seal in, okay? Just past the snap ring groove. And then we're going to snap our snap ring in there. Then we're going to put our wider spacer in. That's very important. Got to have those all set up that way. Um, and then you're at this point. Um, we're good to go. Everything here is good to go. So when you go ahead to torque down this bolt, 
the nut spec for this crank, which I don't see the nut over there, but the nut spec for that crank is like 250 foot pounds. That's really heavy, okay? Do not torque this bolt Do not torque this bolt with the washer after you put your motor sprocket assembly. Do not torque this bolt to 250 foot-pounds. You'll snap that bolt off. And then you got an uh, issue on your hands getting that bolt out of there. This bolt needs to be torqued to 150 foot-pounds. Okay, if you're using the long bolt for the crank conversion, 150 foot-pounds. Okay, very important. So keep that in mind when you're going to put the motor sprocket assembly on. At this point, the only other thing that I would probably do here is route my, um, um, my uh, rotor assembly on here and run it through the hole here. And when you pull that plug through or push that plug in there, it's a good idea to clean. And I'll show you this real quick, just another quick trick. Clean this up really good. You can spray it off with brake clean, get all the oil and grime off of there. But this plug here, clean it up really, really good. Um, and then I suggest taking some of your 1184 gray seal that you sealed the case has and put it on there. These things are very notorious for leaking oil past, and you're always wondering why you have a puddle of oil on the top of your cases there. So it's a good idea to put some 1184 gray seal on here when you press this plug in when you're, when you're putting in your charging system. Now you can put it together now. Um, or you can put it together when it's in the bike. I suggest when it's in the bike. Um, at this point, we've assembled our cases where they need to be to where we're ready to carry it over and put it into the motor or into the frame. Um, the lighter, the better. You don't have to struggle nearly as much. The more you put on now on the bench, the harder it is to put in the frame. Lay some towels down on the frame so you don't scratch it all up. But at this point, it's very carryable over there. It's not as heavy, so you can carry it over at this point, get it in the frame, get it all mounted in the frame and everything in that, and then you can start bolting things on from there. That's the best way to do it in my eyes anyways, to each their own on how they want to go about it. But other than that, this is how we assemble the case halves and prep it. Again, we put in the new, the newer Buell XB XR crank in there. It's plug and play. You just need the motor sprocket assembly, which is right here. Just to show you. And the difference is the spleen pattern and the diameter. So this shaft, as you can see, has a bolt that screws in with the nut in the washer or with the bolt in the washer here, screws in like that to hold it. On your Sportster originally, it's going to have a nut that screws on to hold to hold on your motor sprocket assembly. So, um, um, but at this point, we've got everything to where we need it to, to put it back into the frame. So, other than that, if you have questions, comments, we're good to go. Pretty straightforward, not as many specialty tools as you would need to press bearings on and whatnot. Um, you just need to press bearings out and press a bearing in. Pretty straightforward, you can take it to a machine shop to do that. Um, the one specialty tool, just to kind of reiterate, is that one there to hold back your neutral switch arm. That's very important, though you'll bend it and it won't work, you'll have to tear it all back apart again, okay? Some other kind of specialty tools for pressing in races, be creative. Um, like I say, I showed you kind of what we use and how we've gone about it. It works. Um, other than that, there you have it. That's how we put a rubber mount case together um, with the new crank even. So you get an idea on upgrading the crank if you do have a bottom end issue. I highly recommend that crank as long as they're still available. So other than that, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Peace out.